All right, our second question is from Ed, and he says, hey Rob, I have a question regarding NMN, nicotinamide riboside, NAD+, etc. I've read and listened to several peeps like Peter Atia and guests like David Sinclair from Harvard, uh, who tout the health benefits of NMN and NR for those who've, of us who want to stay young. This is all fine and dandy. Uh, I mean, the number of people taking true Neagin is outstanding, me included. Then Chris Masterjohn, who I love, indicated on one of his podcasts that we should be careful taking NR and the like as it affects methylation, a bad thing, I think, with the possible suggestion of having to take an exogenous form of glycine to balance the negative effect of taking large doses of NMN NR products. Been listening to you for years and always remember you getting a bit pissed off that your listeners wouldn't do some research for themselves before submitting vocational questions. Well, I've tried to read and listen to everything there is and I can't clear the wheat from the chaff. Maybe you can do a video or talk about this subject on your podcast. Well, Ed, you did awesome due diligence on this and honestly, uh, uh, if anything, what this illustrates, like I would tend to... Um, lean towards all things nutrition kind of out of the uh, Chris Master John camp like that that guy just stitches things together in in such an amazing way uh, his recent work looking at uh, MTFR uh, uh, genes and uh, methylation and in particular looking at um, not riboside what uh, riboflavin mm -hmm. as being kind of the critical linchpin element uh, requiring three to five milligrams per day, um, ideally getting the bulk of, of uh, the riboflavin from uh, dietary sources like like uh, liver. But it, a couple of thoughts here. Um, I think that the notion, I'm gonna back up. When we look at things like ketogenic diets and fasting, they tend to emulate a lot of what the benefits of this uh, nicotinamide story is. We tend to shift metabolism towards a profile that looks more like that, that story. Um, supplementing our way there, I think, is very problematic, as, as I think Chris points out. And then similarly, the, the uh, kind of snout to tail, um, well-managed nutrition that Chris recommends largely addresses these issues. Like if you're doing more than just muscle meat, you're getting that glycine balance and you're also getting the, the micronutrients like riboflavin. And so things just kind of play out in the wash. So I think that this is where um, getting really uh, uh, micro scale on this stuff can be problematic. This is, uh, I, I think when people are looking both for health and the longevity story, like people like Michael Rose, Art Devaney that look at a very macro level, um, I feel like they actually have more to provide oftentimes than these folks who are super down in the weeds looking at autophagy and all that stuff, all that stuff's great and it's good to have a, a steeping in that, but then we have to kind of pull the, the focus back and just say, okay, well, what do we get clinically? Like if people do something that gives them better energy levels and better sleep, better performance, in general, that is going to mean good things going forward. And so uh, I don't know if that 100% answers the question, but I, I definitely lean towards the notion that an appropriate glycemic load, uh, leaning towards a ketogenic diet. I, I know Chris isn't a huge fav, uh, fan of ketogenic diets other than some, some more specific conditions, but if we look at just kind of the uh, blood glucose response and, and match blood glucose response appropriate to our glycemic load, so straight out of like the seven day carb test as, as part of Wired to Eat, uh, I, I think that really good things come out of that. And then also keeping an eye on, on a, a proper nutrition that's kind of a snout to tail orientation. Like we, we just, at a macro level, we end up covering so much ground. We get so much good work done. Uh, this is maybe a little bit of a, a far afield point, but we've been working cross-side top at, at Jiu Jitsu. And there's lots of different ways to do it, but the cross-side top that I've learned from Henry Akins, there's always a way of dealing with things, but this one method that he uses addresses so many things simultaneously that it kind of funnels people into a scenario where they only have a very limited number of options. And if you know what those options are, then you can respond to those and almost have a little bit of a game plan. Okay, if they do this, then I'll do that. And similarly, if we're handling our nutrition on a macro level, we don't need to get in and manage the micro details as much. 
because they're just implicitly addressed.